this is the second battle between Agni Duck and Panda Warrior. The factions are Galatia for Panda Warrior and the Boyai for Agni Duck. And these are two factions that we saw a lot of in the tournament. Panda Warrior ha has brought a very unusual Boyai army. Sorry, Agni Duck has brought a very unusual Boyai army. The map is still Armavir. And Panda Warrior has. A Panda Warrior is the attacker, so he has deployed where he's going to be able to have a terrain advantage against against uh, Agni Duck. I'll just go over the builds before the units become hidden. Six, six old followers for the Boyai, very standard stuff. Three Oathsworn, massively strong infantry uh, component for for um, for the Boyai. And against Galatia, that doesn't really have elite infantry, Oathsorn are very useful. We have three Celtic warriors and four Celtic bowmen, four Levy freemen. So, one of the strengths of the Boyai is that they are able to bring the very cost-effective and very dangerous heavy horse. He did not bring any heavy horse in this, this uh, Boyai army. And I think that's going to come back to haunt him. For Galatia, we have six Galatian legionaries. Uh, you don't really have a choice because the uh, Galatian legionaries are... Or do we have only five? One, two, three, four... No, we have six Galatian legionaries. We have uh, three Galatian swords. We have three levy freemen. Two mercenary Syrian archers. One mercenary horse skirmisher because of the 41 missile damage. Uh, two mercenary Cappadocians and a noble horse general. The infantry advantage in this matchup is always going to go to the Boyai, but in this battle Galatia has the uh, strong cavalry advantage because uh, Panda, uh, because Agony Duck didn't bring any cavalry and I think that's a very strange choice because just having the cavalry is going to enable Panda Warrior to take out the skirmishers of the Boyai and to stop the sword followers and the oath sword from getting their very important charge bonuses. So Panda Warrior is going to move up with his cavalry and some of his infantry on the hill to claim a strong terrain advantage early in the battle. We saw the same happen with Agony Duck against Jonas Knee. The attacker is at a massive disadvantage in uh, massive disadvantage in the, this. The attacker is the massive advantage in this battle. Just look at the differences in terrain here. Panda is going to be able to fight downhill all day against the uh, armies of uh, Agony Duck. And Agony Duck is going to start rotating his lines towards the left. But there is no really no way that he can move up here and be in an advantageous position. No matter where he moves, he will be fighting downhill at some point. The Panda Warrior is just going to mirror the movements of uh, Agony Duck. And this is going to do two things. It's going to allow him to enjoy the terrain advantage. And it's also going to mean that the units of Agony Duck are going to be more fatigued when the engagement starts. And having the units be fatigued are go going to be massively important in the prolonged melee engagement that is sure to happen here. And for skirmishers, the mercenary Syrian archers are going to be able to destroy Celtic bowmen because of their 40 armor. But it looks like uh, it looks like um, Duck is actually going to take this engagement, perhaps because of the terrain advantage, because he has some of its units here in the forest. Still, uh, Duck. Uh, Panda Warrior doesn't really care. He's just going to start pouring fire into the Celtic Bowmen and they are dying so quickly. He can use precision shots on his mercenary Syrians to do more damage. He doesn't really need to against the Celtic Bows, but I think it would have been nice if he had done it. You can see the Celtic Bows lost that engagement in a significant way. Not to a single Syrian archer lost on this unit, and they only lost 14 mercenary Syrian archers on this unit, so that was a bad engagement for uh, for Duck. Panda Warrior is going to start the surround, and there's nothing that that uh, 
There's nothing that Duck can do about this because he doesn't have any cavalry to stop it. So the mercenary Syrian archers are going to be able to keep firing on a post into the Celtic bowmen. These Syrian archers could probably destroy all of the Celtic on, uh, bowmen on their own. Levy Freeman just being kept here as speed bumps and as charge shields for these mercenary Syrian archers. Firing at the Celtic bowmen, it's going to be less effective firing into the woods. Still going to do quite a bit of damage to the Celtic bowmen and their morale means that they are not going to be able to stay and trade like this for a long time. The Syrian archers have better morale, better armor, so they're going to be able to get more volleys off, do more damage, but they are still wavering here. The panda is pulling them back, they are routing, but let's see if they shatter. No, it looks like they're going to be able to reform. This unit of Celtic bows is sh just shattered. So now the Celtic bow investment for for uh, Agony Duck is showing itself not to be able to pay, us, pay off as much as they would have needed to. And I question bringing Celtic bowmen and not bringing any heavy horse against Galatia. That's a strange choice in my opinion by Agony Duck. I don't see what he was planning to do with it. Another Celtic unit of Celtic bowmen that came back from routing uh, sh just shatters. He's going to start focus firing on the mercenary Syrian archers and these guys have only lost one archer uh, while killing 126 Celtic bows. So massively important there. Panda is taking his time and surrounding uh, Agony Duck's position in the forest. And this isn't the worst position that Agony Duck can be fighting in, because if he charges here, then he will able to will be able to enjoy uh, fighting downhill. And Panda will have to charge uphill. But it looks like Panda is going to reverse that position, so that Panda is going to be able to charge downhill. And positioning is everything in these battles between... Uh, it, between armies that are somewhat similarly matched. In this case, however, uh, the infantry of Agony Duck is so much stronger than the infantry of uh, Panda Warrior. But Panda Warrior has more tools to be able to deal with the infantry of of uh, the Boy Eye than the Boy Eye has to deal with with Galatia, because rear charges are going to start happening all across the line from the Cappadocians and from the from the uh, general of the general of Panda Warrior when the engagement starts happening. So, Agony Duck is not in a good position here, although he has a significant infantry advantage. Having an infantry advantage is only good if you can use that infantry to stop yourself from getting rear charged and uh, if you're able to defeat enemy infantry and then move on. Because if you are, if you get dragged into prolonged engagements and you get rear charged, that's going to mean that the the enemy cavalry is going to be able to be used to maximum effect and it's going to be difficult to win those kinds of engagements even though you enjoy a significant infantry advantage at the start of it because these three these three oath sword units and a straight up engagement they would be able to wreck tons of galatian legionaries and here we can see the sword followers are both tired and winded from having moved around so much. So that is going to be a problem when the engagement starts happening. Duck is pulling away from uh, pulling away from Panda. I'm not really sure about moving this much because he doesn't have any skirmishers left. Uh, only one, two, two units of Celtic bows. And if he starts, if we're looking at the terrain here, he might be trying to pull Panda up this hill. This lone unit of Galatian Swords came up against Celtic Warriors. They're going to do well against Celtic Warriors, but not when Duck keeps piling the units in like this. That's going to destroy the Galatian Swords, although they will win one against one against uh, Celtic Warriors. The mercenary horse skirmishers are taking some damage from these, these Celtic bows. But creating that blob over here means that the Galatian Swords are going to get clean and great charges on the Celtic Warriors. But Duck is wisely pulling away. He's going to lose uh, some men in the process. But he did not want to take that engagement and uh, let the Galatian Swords get charges on his blob. 
Here, the mercenary horse skirmishers are actually charging into the Celtic bows to try to break them. Which was an interesting choice. Mercenary horse skirmishers are terrible in melee. It might have been to bait javelins from the uh, from the Tylus uh, army as well. And again, we see that uh, Duck is not managing his fatigue well. His sword followers are very tired before the battle has even started. And that is going to be massive if he isn't able to rest them. Galatian legionaries coming in against Celtic warriors. They're going to destroy Celtic warriors, but there is a sword follower here. The problem is though that the sword followers are very tired while the Galatian legionaries are only winded. And managing your fatigue the way that uh, Agony Duck has done in this battle it's it's hard to say if he could have done something else because he is in a disadvantageous position terrain wise so it's going to be a choice between expending stamina to get into a better position or to fight in a disadvantageous position that either way you are pretty much fucked in this situation there are no good solutions to that either either fighting in a disadvantageous terrain or getting out of that terrain kiting but having your men be winded and very tired when the engagement starts happening that can be dangerous still a lot of infantry left on the field for uh, tylus for boy i mean but he's sort of engaging piecemeal uh, maybe he's resting his uh, sword followers. They are managing to to uh, get their stamina back. Baiting javelins with Galatian swords. Uh, good move there. To stop the sword followers and old sword from being able to use it against Panda Warrior's more important units. Getting his uh, noble horse up on the hill. It's going to be able to get great downhill charges on these units. The sword followers are getting absolutely smashed on the charge. They're not really going to take any casualties because of their high armor and their high health, but that that mean, that one charge means that they will get wrecked by the next infantry unit that engages them. They took a lot of hit point damage there, and let's have a look what happens when the Galatian legionaries charge in against the sword followers now. Look at how quickly the sword followers are dying compared to the Galatian legionaries. The sword followers are getting wrecked on the charge, losing decisively against the Galatian legionaries, and that was because of that one charge by the, uh, by the uh, noble horse of, of uh, Panda Warrior. So now the Galatian legionaries are going to be able to finish off this sword follower unit without taking many casualties. A very nice use of cavalry here, and it shows why it can be so dangerous to just spam infantry you don't have the tools needed to stop this from happening. What's happening here? Cycle charges for days from the uh, general of Panda Warrior. Levy Freeman getting charged in the rear. They're not going to break instantly because they were moving and running. Nice javelins in coming there towards the mercenary Cappadocian cavalry. But look at this unit of sword followers up against the Galatian legionaries. The sword followers have killed 18 men. The Galatian legionaries have killed almost 60, and that is the devastating power of the downhill charge from these noble horse. Doing that, moving his cavalry up on the hill to prevent uh, Agony Duck from moving up on the hill himself, and baiting away the old sword here with Levy Freeman, these are the moves that are going to win Panda Warrior the battle. Also using heavy shot and precision shot on the general of, of uh, Agony Duck is massive. So the old sword are going to start dropping when they turn their back like this. Panda roaming freely with his cavalry in the back lines of uh, of the boy eye, and he's just picking picking the units apart one by one. Galatian swords throwing javelins and pulling away. He doesn't want to engage the old sword general just yet. He needs to start doing something with this unit of Mercenary Cappadocian Cavalry for sure. Another Javelin uh, volley incoming from Galatian Legionaries against the Oathsword. And now the Oathsword are going to be up against two units. That's going to be bad for the Oathsword and they're going to be get fired upon in the flanks. This is... they have their back turned so th that is not good for the Oathsword. 
Getting the cavalry in here is going to enable Panda to win this flank in decisive manner. The Galatian legionaries killed 94 sword followers and they only took they only took about uh, 35 casualties and that was the power of the cavalry charge from uh, Panda Warrior. Mercenary Cappadocians eating some javelins for Levy Freeman. He's going to pull them away there, possibly go for these Levy Free, uh, possibly go for the safety of his Levy Freeman over there. But he was sort of caught, so he needs to start moving his cavalry again. And now Tylus is being, uh, Boya is being picked apart, getting rear charged all across the battlefield. And even though, even though Tylus has uh, the, <laughs> even though the Boya, there has been so much Tylus in this uh, battle that I'm going to call the Boya Tylus a lot. Uh, even though. The Boyai had the superior infantry, because the Boyai did not bring their uh, good cavalry as well, the cavalry of Panda Warrior was able to decisively end a lot of these melee engagements, and because Agony Duck had to move around as much as he did, it means that when his units finally get into combat, they're going to be far less effective, and getting, getting losing co the combats and then getting recharged by cavalry, is going to kill off enemy infantry very effectively. So the for Panda Warrior, the mercenary Cyrano archers did a good job. The Galatian legionaries got a whole lot of kills. They actually outperformed the Oath Sword and the Sword Followers. Uh, the Gala uh, Galatian Swords did well, okay as well. Two hundred and ten kills for Galatian Swords. That is amazing. The Celtic bowmen of uh, of Agri Duck were useless and bringing. Three Oathsorn and Celtic Bowman instead of bringing cavalry is a huge risk as the Boyai, and I don't think that was the smart choice in this battle. It allowed Panda Warrior to engage at will where he wanted and when he wanted. And although the kills on these uh, these cavalry units aren't massive, you have to remember that they also broke several several enemy units, and that is also are going to contribute so 900 kills versus 1700 kills here uh, big difference uh, now we're going to see uh, battle number three between agony duck and panda warrior to decide who advances to the next round in the finals thanks for watching strength and honor